And in the impact segment tonight, the House Financial Services Committee, chaired by our pal Barney Frank, held a hearing today with some businessmen receiving government bailout money. Now, pardon me, but I don't trust any of these guys. The bankers ruined the economy. Congress and the Bush administration let them, and so did Barney Frank. So if the folks can't trust the financial system or the government, what can we do to protect ourselves and our families? Joining us from Philadelphia, Dr. Mark Lamont Hill, and from Los Angeles, commentator Larry Elder, author of the book Stupid Black Men. Now, in the break, uh, Dr. Hill, you said something amazing about the debate we had um, with the <laughs> young woman who, again, was very creative to come on here. I just want you to tell the audience. Go. No, I actually think that Helen Thomas should be a uh, fair game. I think I don't think it's over the top to make fun of her voice or anything like that. I don't I don't think that's sexist. I th and I think the Sarah Palin comparison is actually perfectly apt. And one thing I don't want to lose that one, as a leftist is my ability to make fun of Sarah Palin's voice or appearance. So I actually think you're right on that point. Okay. You know, my heart now, uh, Larry, is I don't know if I'm going to make it through okay? the segment if I topple <laughs> over, uh, you know. But look, Dr. Yeah, my, my, heart, my heart stopped beating. Um, yeah, you know what else, Bill? Not only is she not only is she fair game, uh, she's not even a journalist anymore. She's now a columnist, right? Uh, and uh, she says that all reporters ought to be liberal. So of course she's fair game. The Tonight Show routinely made fun of uh, John McCain's age, and I see no reason why we can't make fun of Helen Thomas's age. And you did it, and I, and I thought a humorous and respectful way. Well, I, I didn't do the age deal or the appearance deal. I just want everybody to be clear, and you can watch the stuff on uh, on the Fox News website. It was the voice pattern and it was obvious what I was doing but I'm, I'm always open to uh, criticism but I, I really respected the young woman for coming in here all right look I don't trust and, any and, of and these Bill, guys say, and go ahead go ahead Larry. and Bill if I could say real quickly if you don't, if you don't mind uh, you did leave out uh, uh, what's happening with Vogue uh, magazine because I think they've, they've got the trifecta sexist racist and ages on their cover right now is a very attractive picture of Michelle Obama but there's no picture of Helen Thomas. Okay. Now, I think somebody ought to get on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't trust any of these guys, doctor. I don't trust Barney Frank. I don't trust the Wall Street pinheads. I don't, tr I don't think anybody, including President Obama, knows what this giant spending package is going to do. And I think most of the folks in America agree with me. No confidence in any of these people. It's out of control. So do you have any yeah. advice for people? What, what should we do to protect our financial well-being? Right. And see, Bill, once again, you're, you're almost right on this. I think you're right to the extent that people don't trust the government and people don't <laughs> trust Wall Street. And I, and I agree that they shouldn't trust Wall Street uh, at this moment. But there's a difference between saying that people can't trust the government and saying that people shouldn't trust the government. You know, the argument that you're making is often taken up by conservatives as an excuse to deregulate and to have hands off government, when in fact what we need to do is have more regulation and more oversight so that we can is right problem, on the money. But here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. When you have a guy like Barney Frank, who is supposed to be in charge of oversight, uh, running the uh, running the House Finance Committee, he didn't do his job because he was ideologically blinded. He wanted to give mortgages untrue. to everybody, so he's in charge That's of oversight. He didn't he didn't provide it. That's not true. What isn't true? That's actually well, not well, true. And Bill, it wasn't it wasn't just. Go ahead. Well, Bill, it wasn't just Barney Frank. Uh, the the no, SEC uh, uh, fell down. The FDIC fell down. No. Uh, the uh, the head of the Fed uh, in New York, who's Timothy Geithner, uh, he's one of the cops. He fell down. The bottom line is, uh, uh, when you have government involved in this, uh, you're going to have all sorts of uh, mismanagement, oversight, shenanigans. I, I, listen, the, I don't the bottom have any kind of they were, if they were no, Elliot no, Ness, no, no, no. If they were Bill Elliot Larry, Ness, I would say the, okay. Look, I got 20 seconds, Doctor. You take the last word. Like, you, 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 guys, you guys are both dead wrong on this. It's easy to blame like the Community Reinvestment Act and other things as if poor, giving loans to poor people were, was the problem. The problem here wasn't that. Most of, the, most of those loans performed quite well. The problem here was a lack of oversight. It was corporate greed, and it was irresponsibility by the rich and the government. All right. Gentlemen, always a pleasure. Directly ahead.